Melting is an important property for determining the identity and purity of compounds. In this video, you'll learn how to quickly and easily determine a substance's melting point range with Pascal's wireless melting point apparatus. The melting point apparatus comes with an AC power supply, a 100 pack of melting point determination tubes, an adapter for an optional eyepiece camera, and a removable eyepiece with three times magnification. I'll be using SparkView in this video, but the apparatus can be used with other PASCO software products. Prepare your dry solid sample by grinding it to a fine powder and pack the sample to a height between two and three millimeters. Here's a sample of stearic acid. I'll use a smartphone camera to give you a look through the eyepiece. As I set the sample tube in the chamber, you can see that you can test up to three samples at a time. You can manually focus the image by loosening the eyepiece using the thumb screw, moving the eyepiece until the image is in focus, then retighten the thumb screw. The power is on, so the sample is illuminated and the built in fan is quietly running. I have already connected the temperature sensor built into the apparatus via Bluetooth and SparkView, so the determining a melting point quick start experiment is available to open. You'll see a heating profile on the left, which allows the user to control how quickly a sample is heated. These are the default heating profile steps, and a live temperature reading is available below it. The right side shows a temperature time preview based on the profile settings. You can calibrate the unit to get optimum performance under local laboratory conditions if desired. When you select each profile step, a brief description of its purpose is shown below the profile. Quick ramp is meant to quickly heat the sample to a temperature just below where you expect melting to start. Hold is meant to pause heating and maintain the quick ramp temperature to make sure the system reaches temperature equilibrium. Prompt enables a pop-up window that asks you to click OK to make sure your attention is on the apparatus before the next step begins. Then once you hit OK, ramp begins where heating will resume and the sample will go through the beginning and end of melting. To customize the heating profile, select a different preset profile template or change the value of a heating profile step or add or remove profile steps or reorder steps in the sequence. The preview graph updates itself as changes are made. To return to the original profile steps, choose the default template. So as I mentioned before, I have a sample of stearic acid, but let's assume I don't know what the substance is and I just need to find an estimated melting temperature range for the first run. So in a second run, I can design a more refined melting profile with the second sample. For the ballpark run, I'll delete all the steps except for ramp. And set the temperature to the maximum 350 degrees Celsius. That way I can watch the sample and jot down the temperatures where it looks like melting begins and ends. And I can stop the run as soon as melting is done. And run the cool function. When cool is on, the fan runs at a higher speed and you can monitor temperature to turn cool off when you're at least 20 degrees Celsius below the initial melting temperature. Then you can reset the melting profile to default and design a more slow and controlled run. So if I thought I saw melting start around 69 degrees for a quick ramp, I'd aim a couple degrees lower than that. Let's say 67 on quick ramp and I can leave hold set for 10 minutes or if I'm short on time, I can confidently reduce hold time, let's say three minutes 
since quick ramp is programmed to have a tapered approach to the goal temperature. I'll leave prompt there to make sure that I'm paying attention before ramp begins. And a few minutes into ramp, I should start to see melting from beginning and then go through the end. I'll set the ramp temperature a couple degrees above the estimated temperature where melting was complete. So let's say 71 degrees Celsius. And I could always go a lot higher because I can hit stop anytime I want once melting is done. But this time you can't ignore the time parameter. For best accuracy, don't heat the unit up faster than one to two degrees Celsius per minute. So here, since the temperature difference between quick ramp and ramp is only four degrees, you could set time anywhere between two to four minutes. So here, the estimated runtime is 11.2 minutes, but the actual runtime could be greater or less than 11.2 minutes. Now that I'm all set up, I can hit start, and monitor the temperature in SparkView's live data bar while observing the sample through the eyepiece. But I'm gonna to cut to the chase and show you some images I recorded of an earlier stearic acid run. Here's a time-lapse sequence of what you would see in the eyepiece during ramp. It's sped up over 150 times, and that entire run took about 13 minutes from start to finish. Melting is distinct from glistening or settling, that is, once melting has occurred, you will start to see a liquid. Here, melting has not yet begun, but here, melting is already occurring. Let's go back. Right there, melting is occurring because a liquid is present. You'll also notice the sample transparency change once melting has begun. And melting is not complete until all of the solid has turned to a transparent liquid, there. So your melting point range begins where the sample starts to liquefy and ends when the entire sample has liquefied. And you'll want to complete multiple runs until you have two runs that agree within one half degree Celsius at the starting and ending melt temperatures. Isn't having a video recording nice? It turns out the eyepiece can be swapped out or a USB camera that you can purchase separately. So once you reach the ramp step where melting occurs, software could record image snapshots of the sample along with the current temperature. That means no more second guessing whether the sample was just settling or whether it was actually in the melting phase. Once the run is complete, you can watch an instant replay that includes temperature. I'll demonstrate how that works in a separate video and please visit Pasco.com to see if the melting point apparatus eyepiece camera is compatible with your system and software. You can find sample lab investigations in Pasco's experiment library, such as identification of an unknown based on melting point range, or finding the melting point range of aspirin. Be sure to watch the video on how to use the melting point apparatus eyepiece camera to make instant replay a reality in your melting point investigations. Thanks for watching and see you next time.